everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're really happy to have the members of the Dover Quartet with us today. Um, it, we're, and we're grateful to the Chamber Music Society for making this possible as um, uh, they've been so good to us over the years and bringing us all these world-class artists while they're in Philadelphia. These guys are actually, you guys are, are pretty close, close to home here and we just found out that um, our favorite son here, uh, Brian, lives right across the street. So that's, um, <laughs> that's really wonderful. It's, it's great to welcome Brian Lee back uh, to the building here. Um, as I said, you know, his, his pre-Curtis days, he pretty much lived here, we think, his whole fam with his whole family. So welcome back, Brian. Welcome to all the other members of the Dover Quartet. Um, our first group to play for you today is um, our, our trio, piano trio. They're going to be playing the uh, Beethoven Opus 70 uh, Ghost Trio, the first movement. They are Emily Wu, piano, uh, Daniel Chi, violin, and Aaron Liu, uh, cello. And they're coached by uh, Chuck Parker, Charles Parker Jr. And we'll let them take it over.
Um, as a group, we've been working on it for what four months. Um, but the whole piece, or no, just this one. But um, okay, cool. Emily and I have been doing this trio for um, quite a while with another violence. Oh, nice. It feels like you guys have been playing together for a while, so that, that's a nice feeling. Yeah, I mean, you guys play so beautifully um, and do so many. Things. I'll just start with a really general comment that I feel like you guys have more room to use time to, to tell the story a little bit better. It felt like but, but the thing I appreciated about it is that it was always, it was going somewhere and it didn't sag and get like held back or anything, but I also felt like it was always driving. And I feel like there's some incredibly beautiful harmonic spots and we can hopefully kind of touch on them where I would love to feel like not only is it that you're taking maybe a little bit of time, but that you're also aware of what's happening harmonically and that that is coming through in the playing, so it feels like this character is completely changed. So just thinking maybe a little bit more about like character and sound as well as time. Yeah, I completely agree. It's a, it really does sound amazing, it sounds great. Um, I think one of the things that I noticed that's very hard to capture is to try to live exactly in the moment where you are. And, and actually it's funny, it's maybe partly a symptom of knowing a piece really well um, but I felt that often one could slightly tell that you were living in the future because you were thinking about what's coming next. And so some of the things harmonically that he does where they transform from kind of anxious into beautiful, like the first obvious one being your F natural that then transforms into the, into the F sharp, you were already dolce by the second bar of the F natural uh, because you were thinking ahead. But really, even with the addition of the B flat, it's a very unnatural moment where you're wondering, where is this going? And then it melts into the F natural. But that timing has to really match. But it wasn't just there. It was like kind of, there were many places harmonically where I, could, I felt like I could hear that you were living in the future a little bit. And so that'll affect maybe the way you change your colors and, and also timing and, and stuff like that. There's so many really, really beautiful, amazing things. It sounded pretty awesome. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, beautiful. Um, uh, I, had, I want to add a couple things to, um, uh, yeah, I agree, those were also some of my thoughts. Um, it was very, uh, yeah, I felt like you could have more range in the colors and the characters. Yeah, it was, it was generally quite driving. I thought in the piano, like the pianissimo sections also, like even the very end especially, you could stay like really in, immersed in that mood and that, you know. Um, stay there for a little bit longer. I felt like it was easily, you know, kind of came out of it very um, easily, but I think that's what makes it so special when you really keep it and, you know, um, like bring us in and stay there for, <laughs> for a while. I mean, and he doesn't write crescendo. I think that you were actually quite loud even before the crescendo is written, right? So just be careful. There's also another pianissimo section um, I thought for the strings, you could really capture that color more by maybe um, your bow speeds, maybe explore slower bow speeds so that you can really, you know, um, so it's a different kind, so it's not so uh, easy, yeah? Like, but you could uh, like really draw us in. I think that um, you can get something special, yeah, using that kind of bow technique. Um, I want to also say the phrasing, so, yeah, I, I feel like everything lined up really, really well. Um, you know, ensemble was great. Um, I just, I missed, um, huh, how do I say this? So I heard dynamics, I heard, you know, uh, everything al being aligned. What I missed was actually how each voice sing or phrase um, or your part individually, how that fit into the whole thing. You know, if, does that make sense? So I heard a little bit, maybe like little, um, I wanted to hear longer lines and I wanted to hear how the three of you created along the big picture. I heard a little bit, maybe too segmented, you know. Um, I think we could work, I'll, I'll, you know, get into that as we work together. Um, but yeah, some exchanges, you know, it was like, just being aware of how the voicing is passed through or, you know, so it's less um, vertical, less segmented, but there's also a more like how, what your part, you know, how that fits into the long line, long phrase, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, like you can have a maybe, okay, for instance, like if you have a forte section, it's not all just one type. It, that phrase may evolve, right? During, but it's all technically forte. But there, you know, the nuances within forte could change because the harmony changes and the phrasing develops or doesn't, you know? So more variety and yeah, um, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that. Um, but yeah, generally very, very good. Awesome, yeah. Um, not much else to add. I love the energy. Definitely had a lot of the Cumbrio. Um, I think, uh, I guess, like, sort of to go along with what Joel was saying, like, uh, tempo-wise, like, you guys can have be more flexible and take time. Um, I think to kind of go along with that is just, like, in terms, like, of a character, I think you could have more poise in this. Like, for me, like, I loved a lot of the kind of energy that you guys had, but sometimes it felt, like, not in your control. Like, even, for instance, the opening, like, the energy was great, but you guys weren't even like perfectly together. Like I felt like there was like moments where you guys are rushing at different points and stuff. Um, so it's like kind of that controlled, like ca chaos sort of like where you're like driving and moving, but it's all in control. You're like letting the instrument, like you're in control of the instrument, sort of not the instrument is in control of what's happening, sort of. Felt a little bit with that. Um, and yeah, the poise, like, in general, I feel like with the energy, like, things can feel a little muscular, even when it's, like, singing or lyrical. Um, so, like, exploring in those singing passages to just be, yeah, have that poise and feel like you have time to sing things through, basically. Um, which is essentially what all these guys were saying, uh, too, so. Um, and then one little specific thing, when you guys have, I really appreciated the, uh, Difference of that sixteenth note right there, bom, 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 So often you can just hear it like a triplet or something in between. Um, but I do feel like you have to think about it in the context of certain things. So when you have the bom, like for me the character is bom, and then the way you guys played it was like it was exactly the same as you did it before. It's like bom. Ta -da, ta -da. Like it had like a lot of energy, but for me those notes are kind of like this section is a little bit more in suspense. So you don't want to have any like weird jerky kind of things with the sixteenth note right there, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's a good little small detail, but maybe we can just start from the top. Part of it's we're not keeping the suspense, and I feel like it also makes a crescendo at the end um, in the cello when you're getting into the dolce. It feels like da -di, like you're almost becoming sure of itself instead of this note suspending. They leave you there, and it's suspended, and then you fall into this totally different character. There's also um, I feel like genuinely guilty for even suggesting this, but sometimes doing fingerings that seem dumb might offer an opportunity to achieve something special. So the magic in this moment is having zero loss of energy between the F natural and the F sharp and then transforming color perfectly, right? So even though it sounds so dumb, if you got on first finger on the F and then did a half step shift so that you're theoretically, you can have the smallest gap possible. Or you could do like two, two, you know what I mean, on the F sharp. But weirdly enough, that tiny moment of you having to go like that, there is a ceiling in terms of how close you can get those sounds together. So even though that fingering seems really dumb, like, oh, try one, one, one. Have you tried one, one, one for the opening? <laughs> um, but oddly enough, it might give you that extra chance to do something really spectacular, which honestly is right in that transformation. I liked what you did this time more. I feel like one of the challenges that we face often is when we have a diminuendo, we tend, to, it's like desaturating the color in a photo often, and what it should be instead often is the photo getting smaller, like it's more distant, but the, the context and the energy shouldn't change unless the harmony changes, right? So I liked this time that you were holding that meaning more, but then the meaning changing right across that bar line is still, you know, what could be even more 
spectacular, but it does sound really good. Uh, the opening, I feel like I hear like multiple breaths happening and they're not at the same time, and then the opening is just like not quite together still to me. So like, are you cueing? Is it? Yeah, I f and then I felt like I heard you breathe as well, but it was like after him, and so the, the downbeat was totally untogether. So yeah, maybe just like, I feel like I, I like the idea of like you all kind of cueing it sort of, but like really visually at least, like there's one person who is sort of leading it more, and you guys are like sympathetically sort of leading it. So I, I can I just add one more thing? Um, the opening also all the way to the dim bar um, can it feel? So I heard a great you know energy and great fortissimo and you know, but I think with the notes you can also go beyond like once you don't you know that it it's it's still the phrase develops. So this is for example yeah um, what I was trying to say earlier. Um, go with the phrase, go with the shape of the line. It's, it, yeah, like the excitement is there, but for some reason, for me, I, it, it's still static. I don't I want to really hear the phrase, you know, go, and then that way you have a place then, a better place to come down, you know, for the dim and then the color, the dolce color. Let's try from the beginning. <laughs> I wish like the intensity that you begin the F natural continues all the way until the whatever you're releasing into. Maybe like if we could just try it one more time. time. <laughs> I feel like yeah. you actually are a forte for a full bar before, and then she comes in in piano, and then you have the dim. So like it should be done, dim da ya, right? It's like almost like her piano urges you to like soften your intention with this F natural, right? I also think to go along with that, like it's not just the right hand, but it's also the vibrato. Like that doesn't like change bum until the next thing. We're being so hard on you with this moment, but it's again, this is the kind of stuff we love to rehearse all the time is little things like this, because you can already play so well. What you're doing, right? You're going, what? Instead of, right? So you have to hold the density, even if you get softer in the previous hairpin, again, don't desaturate the meaning of the moment, but keep the intensity even if it gets quieter, and then you expand the sound to glow it, but it's softer technically on the dolce. Does that make sense? So many different ways to say it. We're probably saying it like all the ways that don't make sense right now. <laughs> <laughs> Singing's probably the best. One more time. <laughs> Together to ya di da da di da, and then we got ya di da da. Right, so I feel like we should feel that it feels. I want to say that this. I don't want to say that it, this should be slower, but we should be able to sing through everything. And you should be able to have time to make this incredibly beautiful compared to this like con fuoco, con brio, whatever opening that we have. Right, like it's really, really intense. It's very short. The articulation is kind of aggressive. Right, and then we get the long line. And I would love to feel like the juxtaposition between the ta 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 and the. And also like the meaning behind you play your part, you play your part, then you each play your parts together, and then she plays her part, right? But there's like one, uh, like a call, a response, and then like a duo with the response, right? Kind of thing. That was so yes. much closer, by the way. That was really cool. Yeah, definitely different. <laughs> You guys get 
get so excited in the crescendo on the front here that I, I don't feel like she's leading the crescendo, and I wish that she were the one that you're listening to, because she's the one with the more interesting stuff than da -dee, da -dee, da -dee, da -dee. right? As, as beautiful as that is, but it's like it supports <coughs> something more beautiful on top. Yeah, I think that, so this is just a general thing, right? Whatever you play, and um, I mean, I guess even in solo, but you know, especially in chamber music setting, you have your dynamic written in your parts, but always remember it's not, you know, there's not just one type, right? There's so, it's always in context. Um, I mean, some composers even write literally, yeah, different dynamics because they don't want it all to, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so you have to keep that in mind. You have crescendo, but it's not just one type of crescendo. It depends on what Emily, <laughs> yeah, what Emily, how much Emily yeah, opens up with that, so you're the supporter there. So really keep in mind, yeah, what your role, where, yeah, what kind of role you have. Um, and your dynamics should be accordingly, yeah. To, uh, so you want to start from the Dolce, maybe? From measure seven? <laughs> Two bars before that. Thirteen, where the piano begins, where Emily starts oh. also. Going. harsh side than I feel like you probably want it. It's like, uh, it just seems like a, I don't know, I could see someone like, oh, I want to shout my love from the mountaintop, kind of, <coughs> kind of fortissimo, where you're like shouting, but you're shouting about something really beautiful. Love shouting. Yeah, love shouting instead of like, I'm going to talk about the state of war and I don't know, like some, some really dark stuff. So maybe that character can just be more, like more bow, more resonance. I feel like you guys are using little bits of bow and it's like very into the string, right? So it's like, yeah, da, 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 da. it has more that quality instead of, yeah, da, da, da. imagine you're singing, I think, to like a huge audience rather than like trying to muscle. Don't, don't muscle it. Yeah, I would just think of a lot of resonance, you know, a lot of open, yeah. Try to get um, that power that you want, you know, not from like pushing strength, but more of a ah, open, Openness and that sound will, yeah, carry and sound large. Um, is, it, is it okay if we go from 21? I would love 
love to hear a longer line. I'm hearing, can I just be, get technical for a moment? Um, I would love to see more saving bow instead on the long value notes being, you know, because then it sounds bar by bar. Um, so if you sustain, if you sustain, if you save bow, you could really create over those bar lines, just really one phrase and then bring us into the fortissimo. Yeah, um, same place. <laughs> on the second bar, so instead of does that make sense? Um, which would be better for the phrasing. Um, because of, technically the second bar is a weaker bar than the, than the first. And then beyond that, what you can do is, starting from 21, very slightly the cello line would very slightly release, and even though you have a chord when you come in, the violin line then very slightly for two bars actually increases. So they're, they're sort of like vibrating a little bit, these <laughs> phrase structures, which is cool. And it, it helps keep it not sound like rock and roll, the <laughs> So avoiding everything feeling like a downbeat in equality is, is good. Um, so you want to try the same? I was going to actually, uh, Emily, maybe you also don't have to like, I feel like you're giving every beat, or so not every beat, every downbeat. <laughs> Like maybe to be clear so that you feel, but maybe you can give like every two bars, like da di da di da di da da. So then we get all of a sudden kind of these longer phrase structures again, avoiding the rock and roll. Especially if you lift and then sort of, you know, bring a lot of weight back down into the instrument, it's going to sound especially like da 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 da. Um, but if you can, the secret is like at the very end of the down beat, down bow, sorry, to have more density actually than the beginning of the upbow. Does that make sense? Um, so. You know what I mean? Instead of what you're doing is. So you'd actually sustain more and then ironically like release up into the second bar. Does that make sense? But it's hard to do actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I feel like I'm getting a lot of last notes, which I would argue that that's maybe the least important of your notes, right? Like the voice is going to the downbeats, right? Then Of course, you don't want each one to have the same kind of feeling, but you're still making hierarchies. Not what I'm getting. So really, yeah, be thoughtful about it. Maybe just right at 27, uh, 14. Yeah, sorry. Um, Ellie, I think that, yeah, does the dynamics good? Energy's good, but um, just, for me, the chords, your second beat chords, it's a little bit maybe too much of a down feel, but can it be more of a, you know? So, yeah.
change the, the, the intent of a note before it maybe should? You know, um, uh, where cello has G sharp and the violin has the B. It's forte for a bar, right? And then it's piano, but it's not piano dolce. It's still sort of got an intensity to it. And then it changes on the pew piano because the harmony really changes there. Also, another place to think about vibrato. Right, the first one, that's also going to help it feel dancey. If we're stressing the right things, the, the thing that doesn't make it feel dancey is when everything is kind of the same and when you're accenting or bringing out at least notes that are not the strong notes. In, in three, what's your strongest beat? One, two, or three. One, what's your second strongest beat? It could be. I, I, I would rather one, two, three, one. So three feels like it's kind of leading to a one, so that we kind of get the circular motion. So it's not one, two, three, one. It sounds more like a doctor beat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> kind of feeling. So yeah, just ha having that as just kind of your general guideline to help things feel dancey so that it feels like we have this kind of motion is really helpful. I think, I think the challenge here is that the second beat is still a quarter, um, so it's not too clipped either. Like you don't, you know. I think you could, you have more options to shape and make the phrasing more interesting if you really take it, uh, not take advantage, but you know, really, really um, keep in mind that it's not an eighth note, the second beat, because then it sounds, it, it, can, it has a tendency then to sound too repetitive, but. Um, but, uh, you know, but I think it, you could, you know, tastefully phrase with the quarter. I would same thing, Emily. When you have it, I mean, you technically don't have right. You don't have the crescendo, like when the strings have it later, right? In forty something, yeah. So longer phrase. You use the quarters, yeah. That it, yeah, to create that longer line. Um, maybe we go from forty three. Some of them have more energy, but like uh, uh, da -da, da -da. to me right now, they feel like electric jolts or something. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Like they're too much. Like in this character, I feel like. I think it's more an articulation thing where it feels like you guys are like trying to bring it out. But if you think of it as maybe belonging to like the next note. When it's louder than the next downbeat, then that's I think where it like tends to stick out that way. Yeah, there's also that subito pianissimo in sixty-seven. Just be like, I don't know, like I don't I don't really have a good mental image for it. It's like some kind of like <coughs> simple rain falling on something that's like soft. It's like magic. I think that if you, because it's so good, um, <coughs> trying to think what what would make it even, you know, that that extra special. Um, uh, I'm hearing because all the notes are, it's really really great. It's all in tune. And I just, I think what would make it even more magical would be in the notes or even in between notes. If you really, it's like it's not just a sustaining quality, but it's really taking care of how one note going to the next note, like that space between, you know. So even, um, I mean, I could, I guess, simply just say, 
Emily, more slur. Think of more of the legato at 40, where, where was that, 40, 4, 5, 6, 7, the <coughs> poem, you know. But, but it's really, it's not just no, 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 you know. And then I think the same thing for these colors, all these dynamic changes at 50, 60, you know, where we're just talking about, right? The supidos, the crescendo, and then the, all the it's very specific dark dynamics he writes here. I think same thing with that. I, the, to make it more effective is not just doing what's written, but it's really taking care of, um, you know, the forte, like, oh, it, you know, all the notes, the, the piano crescendo, it's like between the notes that really, then you get the crescendo. It's not note to note that the crescendo happens. Do, do, does that make sense? Yeah? And then you have forte, you reach, and then the dynamic, you know, the, 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 the um, dim happens to piano. Keep in mind, it's only to piano, not too soft, because then the next bar, when you have pew piano, right, it's not as special, you, you're giving away. So, um, yeah, I hope that, that makes sense. So like taking just more care, not just the landings, but it's also after. Yeah, it's which direction you take once you land on the note and then the connection to the next note. Yeah? Um, I don't know if we have time. It's just, just to just do... Try. Yeah, I think definitely. Maybe where? <laughs> 40, 43, 43 to the end of the... Yeah. If we do that, just one tiny thing. At 43, to me, it sounded almost pianissimo like. like it was a little fragile and a little crackly in the sound quality in a way. Let me just make sure you have enough air and speed to. Also, to add on to that, like I think just because it's marked piano with no dynamics, like I, I want to state that the use of no dynamics is very important, especially for someone like Beethoven, but I don't think it means shapeless. So I think like if you're just making a tiny bit of like, like just highlighting the contour is, is natural. For it to sound like da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da is maybe not so natural. So maybe just a hint of shaping. Uh, yeah, just shaping. A, like a, as a, a, one of our mentors, Pam Frank, used to say, baby dynamics, they're good. Right? Just like ever so slightly, but it's not really like that we could plot a dynamic thing. Just a little bit of interest. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, kind of great. Uh, you guys have done a lot of good work on this. Um, I guess for me, the couple general things, um, it feels to me like you guys could have a bit more, I would mentioned in the other group too, but I think it's applicable here, like a little more poise sometimes. Um, for me, like especially this opening material, da -da 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 -da, there's like a sort of regalness to this, and at the moment it feels like you guys are like almost rushing through it sometimes. It's like da -da 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 -da, like you're kind of glossing over certain things, but to really feel like there's like this kind of upright poise. Da -da 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 -da. Um, and using like playing off of each other sort of like feeling that kind of thing um, yeah the poise and oftentimes things felt like very vertical and I think you guys could explore like some of the like lyrical things and also to kind of tie into that is um, I felt like generally whenever I was like so aware of markings and articulations in your playing like to me it, they felt like they were markings like oh they, they're doing a dot here or like there's this kind of stroke but to me I was like because I was so aware of that it kind of took away from the music like you want those things to like kind of naturally meld together in a way that's like not noticeable like we're not aware of like the techniques going on into the performance like all the audience wants to hear is like the music and how it makes people feel and stuff um, so I think like your job is to like sort of interpret those markings in a natural sort of way, not in a way that's like, okay, here's a dot, I'm gonna play a dot, and like it's gonna come out like dictation sort of. But it's it's more than that. It's just about like how this music speaks to you, and like interpreting those markings in a way that is cohesive and understandable, I think, and relatable. Um, like the big one for me was uh, at uh, 18. Like, especially in the three lower voices, like, to me, it felt like, da, 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 like, just, like, a marking or a bowing, but I didn't really get the sense of, like, like, this is kind of, like, a big climax here, uh, emotionally, in this movement, at least, and it didn't really feel like, I didn't really, I wish it had more, somehow, more passion, and for me, the stroke had a lot to do with that, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, I had, had a similar, um, similar thought as I was listening, um, I, I would have, um, I think that, yeah, all the markings so it's, it's similar to what, a, what Brian was saying. Um, I want, I, I wanted to, he, wanted you all to use his markings to capture more of what you want to say with the music. You know what I mean? So, I, in particular, he writes these accents so, spec, you know, specifically, um, and places, you know, uh, on specific notes. He's very detailed, right? Um, and I, I, yeah, using his detailed markings as a, um, as a hint or as a, you know, uh, to help what you want to achieve, character, you know. Um, I, yeah, I thought that overall it was so well played um, but it, it was like I heard maybe two or three max you know it was all kind of like okay it's a lot of information you know I, I, I yeah so if if it could be more organized in a way that is yeah like uh, by, by using what he wrote right as to help you um, but yeah just getting more yeah kind of like being really committed yeah basically being really committed to what you're doing with the music. Yeah. Um, I think that's always a challenge, actually, for us, right? For us all, whenever we play, um, that, you know, we practice so hard, and but at the end, when, in performance, it's really that extra, right? Um, like, really going for it, really, and, and in order to go for it, we have to know that much more, right? That much. We have to really know what we're going for, what we want to say. That's what we're practicing. That's our goal, right? And then in performance, it's really not being afraid and giving maybe even more than 100%, you know? But if we do kind of semi, then it doesn't come across to us, yeah? Um, so, and then as a quartet, of course, that's what you, yeah, discuss in rehearsal, right? Um, like, what are we doing here? What, what, are we, what are we going for, you know? Um, but yeah, great, great. Yeah, no, I, 
definitely agree. Um, I'm almost inclined to just not say too much and then start playing, maybe. But yeah, hmm? you're gonna start. Oh no! Yeah, I'm not gonna say too much. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that's a. I, I wonder whether some of it is that you guys might be a little calmer. Well, I, I don't know if you're maybe nervous. That's a separate thing. Not that you sounded nervous, but. Um, but it seemed emotionally kind of reserved, actually, for for the piece. And maybe if you're one of the hard things, actually, about what we do as musicians is like being emotionally on call as your job to suddenly feel angry when you're supposed to feel angry. You know what I mean? It's like actors. Yeah, and you have to really feel it. You can't just—I mean, you can fake it, but people can tell the difference. So I think I think that's part of what we're feeling is that maybe there could have been actually more, um, in a way, enjoyment because you'll get you'll get more into the darkness and light of the piece um, emotionally, and then maybe some of the things are going to start to come together without having to think too hard. Um, but it, it does sound really, really good. It sounds awesome. It's, a, it's an old friend, this piece. It's yeah, very, very old, old friend. I was like, parts in the middle, I was like, I can't remember something. I know, I was <laughs> opening rings, rings pretty true. Um, it sounds really good. I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, I think one of the toughest things in Shostakovich is a lot of the music is forte and fortissimo, and finding a way to make long passages of both of those really interesting and not just feel like, you know, I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of a rock and roll element, but it's like there's also like a kind of anticipation and uh, inevitability in the music that feels scary, and how to make something scary for a long period of time, I think is, is kind of difficult. Um, I feel... Um, sometimes to me the balance was not clear as to who had what needed to happen. Um, I feel like a lot of this piece lives like first violin plays a lot of the melody, cello gets a certain amount, I would say the middle voices don't get so much, but when three or more people do have, or I guess two or more, maybe like two or three people have the same gesture, I'm thinking especially moments like five, big number five. So first of all, dun dee dun dee, and then you guys dun dee you know, dun dee I feel like that kind of thing could be much more unified as a group and make it feel much more scary, just in the way that you guys are using your bow and the way that you guys are using vibrato and even just how much dynamic and how much swoop you're getting into it, and to then tie into what Brian was saying, it did feel like I feel like you guys can use again rhythm really, really effectively, and I felt like it tended to be flowing forward, which takes away any kind of uh, power that you have in the, mu in the music. So, like, I could see even getting into five, for example, like, it's like, kind of like, and th that, for me, is a big structural point in five. Like, we've, we're changing everything that we've had, and it's kind of been all the opening stuff until then, so it's like a totally new character and a new feeling. So if it falls right into that, sometimes it feels like like life is just kind of passing you at the same speed, but it's like it doesn't really. Like we appreciate some things, and then we kind of like fast forward to the next thing that is of interest, right? So I wish that we had more more of that, more of that clarity sometimes. But I'm just thinking too much. It sounds sounds really good. Um, start at the top. Not to stack on, but since we're going from top, one of the the sort of concrete things I noticed I think you could do better is not to do a blah, like a big accent, an extra accent at the end of these hairpins. I think they're smoother than that. So it's not that they have to be like freakishly linear, but but not blah, it's blah, right? Just a little heavier. So I noticed you guys were, I think, starting up though, is that right? I don't really remember what we did, but I actually feel like I we did could, down. I think, yeah, I think we did down bow, and there's something nice about that because it gives the downbeat still like a lot of importance. Right now, what's happening because of the up bow, it felt like like you guys were sneaking in, and the downbeat for me, I missed that sort of power there. Even though you had the crescendo, but I think if you want to try a down bow, maybe. Also, a natural pitfall of the opening for the second beat to sound, it almost sounds like da -dee -da -dee -da, and I know there is the accent, but the accent should be in addition to the normal phrase. So it's ya di dum di dum di da di ya di dum right ta di dum di dum. So both, I think, give us the downbeat too, and maybe that's also like tying onto what he's saying. Like that feeling of the downbeat should feel like a downbeat, not like uh, like it's only lifting to beat. Da 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 da
da, we're right into the bite. Da, 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 bing, dee, da, dee, da. That's like, again, the opening material. So it feels like it's maybe a very small structural point, but it is the beginning of something again, rather than it being part of this, like, now, like, nine or ten bar phrase. Does that make sense? So that it, it has a, a bit of something. And it's the way that you get into it feels like it's almost like leading into it. Um, I think dynamically, if you want to lead into it, it's great. I wouldn't lead into it also with time. Uh, you can move forward with intention, but also hold back with the time. Transforming the sound like uh, like this, <laughs> rather than actually going, you know, um, or you can think of it like if you've ever canoed, the way that you're canoeing right now, you would like splash the person behind you. <laughs> you have to think of like deep and strong, but not have, like whacking the end of the stroke, you know. So deep. Can we just try the three voices? <laughs> Actually, the very, very end, almost like the rest, right? Like the, the end of the note, right after the end of the note, right? It's a little bit like a hairpin note right now. Yeah. Like, I think maybe? your second eighth note is the quietest in a way, instead of like, uh, Like, think actually the end of the note is the loudest. That silence is actually the loudest. Is that crazy? But yeah, do you know what I mean? Okay, try it one more time. It also sounds sound like so awful and brutal to mention it, but like intonation is key for this to sound awesome. Right now, it kind of sounds like a jank band a little bit, like ever so slightly. It could also be open strings. I know you have a lot of open strings, so like like getting that really tight before just so that you have the most chance because it is open and there are no thirds. In this. It's like it kind of almost sounds medieval in a way, right? So it's like you get that to feel more strongly when when, when it's really good. So like listen to the intonation. And it's like what is it? Someone told me that. Uh, that Heifetz was always lauded for his intonation. He said, it's not that I play in tune better than anybody else, I just adjust much faster. It's also like a really great skill to be able to adjust while you're playing, to hear how things are and to like do that. Because a lot of times, in, like you're in a concert, you're playing something and like your strings are just out of tune, you have to deal with it, you have to eat it. So like, yeah, good skill to just like think about it and like always be listening and adjusting. Yeah, um, yeah that's better. Yeah, I think that when we have rests also, you have to remember that the rests are also part of the phrase, right? It's not that when you're done playing, that it's over. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's still in character, I think, even after. Like, in silence, it's still the tension. Um, let's put everything together from the top. And also, I think when you have ties across the bar line, being able to lean into those, 
like so that we feel still that the ones are often the strongest <laughs> is really helpful to give us a sense of pace and uh, lilt in the music. Yeah. I wonder if the dynamic you could think that opening, you know, forte only. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, think of it as a character. So I, it's not yet like ah, oh, right? It's not. It's it's there's something very you know with open strings as well. There's something ah oh, like more open and just kind of presenting like you know an entrance sort of. Um, so I would yeah I wonder. And then when you go to lower octave, you know, think of that register and how that character changes, right? That helps you kind of organize. And then and then yeah, cello. Um, yeah, so that way you can pace your, yeah, pace the, break the characters, I guess, yeah. Um, last time from the beginning? Technically, um, Fortissimo and the character. I wonder if it could just be um, like more compact or so, um, like to get to you know. So it's not so it's not too loose, but uh, like you know, really condensed and concentrated. Um, so <coughs> yeah, maybe think of how much bow you're using. Yeah, just. Yeah, try, try something. I have one other thought for you too, just yeah. ch cello-wise, although actually I notice at any time this melody happens, um, but I think the technique is a little different for, for the uh, bridge string players, but um, because there's so many fifths, the danger is that it can feel like, even if it's microscopic, you know what I mean? So I would either like button mash, or I would so you're actually using different fingers, does that make sense? So that you theoretically can, again, there is no limit to how close you can get those notes together. Because it's gonna help help it feel, you know how those cellists of that time, like the way they held their bow even was like, <laughs> like all the way in the hand, it's so heavy, and those, like they, they didn't lose much energy in those little moments, but I think even some left hand planning can help. That's also, <coughs> I sympathize because that's like, here, have a great fortissimo solo on the D and G string <laughs> while everyone else is playing the other. It's really hard, so you're gonna have to try very hard there. On yeah. the point. It's just a really good register for, like, you're on the E string, it's like naturally built for you to <laughs> succeed, you know, so just yeah. try your hardest. A little before two, there's... Uh, maybe four before two. Part of it that can make it seem a little bit more 
dum 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 You know what I mean? Instead of do dun 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 dum Sounds like you're obeying and you want to make him feel like you're actually scaring him. All a little crazy, you know? I actually found that in the opening from you as well. I think you could play around with that in bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That it doesn't, there's, you know, no conductor, nothing you have to stay with, only the, the character, which can be a little more rustic. In a way, you know? I thought the balance was better at two. Um, there's something about it, though, like, you guys kind of have to create the illusion that it's still, like, strong while still balancing to the cello. Um, I think part of that entails, like, yeah, being more involved with the left hand or something. You're just like, so even if you're trying to stay out of her way, like you're not like being passive about it. Like it's still technically a loud dynamic for everybody while you're trying to let that solo through. But um, yeah, I think you can achieve that by like, maybe like more bow with less pressure and like more vibrato or something like to just maintain that interest in that dynamic. Maybe just for time, trap one. Yeah. Right, all with all the stuff with the timing and all that stuff, but that it feels like the first bar and the third bar feel like where the beginnings of musical material begin. Right now, it just feels like. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it almost feels like six beats of, or like twelve beats of information rather than like two six. You know what I mean? So, can you try to phrase by two bars here? So it has kind of like a circular thing. <laughs> For me, that's the phrase. At the moment, it feels like, it, like because the balance shifts so much, and it's not like it feels like there's different amounts of power happening across the thing. It feels actually like there's a huge diminuendo being made, which I don't think is horrible in the sense. But I, I feel like if you're trying to do it to keep the interest until the crescendo, so that the crescendo is exciting, I would maybe do a little less diminuendo. It feels like it kind of loses a little bit of its strength before the end of this thing, and it's like it's all kind of powerful. Um, it's just that five is more powerful, you know, than, than before, but it's not like it came from nothing. You know what I mean? So keep that intensity through. Again, that's like what I was saying in the beginning that I find is really always very difficult about Shostakovich, is keeping the loud stuff interesting, but also directional, right? So it's not just like loud for a long period of time. Um, maybe five minutes. Awesome. Uh, maybe four? Or, uh, sorry, third bar of four, maybe? Yeah. Just pulling up 
horrible rotten dirt everywhere, you know, but not popping out of the ground every once in a while. It has to be really, really deep. Can we just hear the, the lower three actually at five? And absolutely zero lifting. You can do the accents, but the accents have to do with, you know, grading pressure and all that, not lifting. <laughs> instead of boo, boo, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, yeah, no lift. You want to try it one more time? Well, so this is a general thing for everyone. I feel like whenever you guys have the eighth note with the dot, it sounds really intense. It's like, so, da, da, like, like it kind of sounds like angry, is that, but I feel like, again, I'm going to go with the plow and it's like, da, yum. like it, there's a kind of fullness at the end rather than a, it almost feels trivial when it's so quick and easy in a way. Da, yum, de, yum. It's the same gesture that we had at the opening, except now this time we have a dot on it, so there's like maybe a little more intensity to it, but I don't think like. Yeah, one more time. shaping quite a bit of your sound. A lot of, actually so much of what makes a string player, what makes each of us sound different from each other and like ourselves, is the way you change the bow, actually. So, but what tends to happen as we're younger is your bow changes take up a really big part of, of your playing. And so that actually, it just changes the way you sound quite a bit and you each have a different habit in terms of how you do that. So it doesn't sound like really, really deeply, you know, the same and scary, but it sounds better for sure. But no lifts is good, for sure. Five? With everybody? Yeah. Cool. We're about Oh, yeah. Okay. Just last time. <laughs> Thank you. 
very passionate about this piece. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really, really good. Um, I feel like if I had to offer like one general piece of advice, is I wish that the dynamic you guys held them for longer. A lot like I feel like there's just so much. Um, I, I feel like I always say that like the Vorjak, it's like the the piece ends like 20 times, right? It's always like it's always building. And like I feel like there's no one that knows how to write a coda better than than Vorjak, and there's not even really like a coda in a sense in this in this movement. Um, at least from struggle, I guess maybe kind of is. Um, but I feel like it's always amping up, so it's in, in a way that's not so different maybe from the Shasta Kovic in the previous year. I feel like keeping the interest in the music while not kind of giving everything away the entire time and feeling like you're just playing your brains out for like 15 minutes is probably, it's just a, a really useful skill, I think, like in, in playing music in general. And uh, I feel like it allows you to explore more other tools that you have in your arsenal that are not just loud and soft. Um, to be able to create interest. So I, I think that would maybe be one of my overall comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, similar to this, um, what Jill just said, um, <coughs> in the louder, I'm just gonna s specify more, um, in the louder dynamics, I mean, cause so much of it is right lofty and really, really loud, it's like how, do we keep it engaged? How do we keep developing from this status where we're already like up here? Um, I think you could work a lot with texture in your, I guess spe specifically maybe bow, yeah, bow technique. Like just how do you get the sound out? I mean, even in forte, like a lot of the violins when you yeah have um, long value notes and it's um, you could vary it more depending. You know, like you, it's not a drop down per se, but you know, in your, uh, like the way you draw the bow, the way, you, like how much bow pressure, for instance, right? So you could still capture the character and still, you know, be in that uh, passionate mode, but maybe if you scale back a little bit from like how much you dig in, you know, also for balance to help, yeah? Um, and then that way you have, a, you have more of a place than to go from there, right? Um, so I think that there's, yeah, I think you know which spots, right? But yeah, so, um, and then and then on the contrary, like the more textural, um, the smaller value notes, like stuff that just needs to be popped out, right? Um, in this big, <laughs> you know, tech, like thick, um, or yeah, uh, instrumentation, um, that, you know, then, then you would go more uh, in like the, more articulation direction rather than choose matching, yeah, that it's forte, oh, it's long, but rather, you know, shorter and kind of pop, yeah, pop the notes out. That way we hear everything, yeah, and we hear the important line and we, fo we can follow, yeah, um, what it is uh, that we should be listening for, right? And then, and still the energy being there. Um, I thought the beginning, I, I think it settled well. I, it's in two, right? Is it in cut time? Yeah. I thought it was a bit maybe too much in four. Like it was a little bit on the, I wish it could just be, in a way, I mean, yeah. Like it's such a beautiful melody. I think that, um, I don't know, something maybe simpler maybe? Yeah, less heavy. Um, so maybe t thinking of it in two will just take care of it, right? Um, yeah, it's beautifully played. Uh, there's one last thing. Oh yeah, so so going back to the the shorter strokes, like when you all have that, you know, the, that middle part right before the. Um, I thought it was too loud, right? Like the eighth notes, it's like not very important, right? I, I don't I don't have those bar numbers. Yeah. 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 So 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 going for. Like I, 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 yeah, a place. Yeah, yeah. Where's that two six two seventies area? You know that that whole air section. Um, so really, when you're playing with your part, but also with everyone, you know, understanding um, what the color is. Yeah, not just playing the notes, but really, what what am I doing with these notes? Where do how do these notes fit into what we're what we're trying to say with the phrase? So I think here those notes it would just be to help the atmosphere, to help the character. It's not, we don't need to hear every single da 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 da, you know what I mean? Yeah, so just, yeah, maybe very, 
yeah, just th think of what kind of color. Um, and softer, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, I thought the lines also like some, a sorry, I'm talking too much. Um, you know, phrasing, like when you have also consecutive eights that, that kind of develop hairpin wise, those also just, uh, just a, the arching of it, shape, you know, less in four. Um, I, I think the reason is it's such, it can be so heavy and big all the time that it'd be great to get these different, yeah, colors and textures still through, yeah. Um, great. Yeah, kind of great. Um, I guess the only one small thing I might add is just um, well, maybe to kind of go along with Julianne's comment about it feeling like too much in four. I felt like there was like a rigidity with your flexibility, actually, like, and that kind of maybe ties in with the beadiness, sort of. Um, it felt like pretty straight, in my opinion, um, and I feel like there's opportunity to kind of be a little more flexible. I meant to, to take time, basically. I didn't really feel like you guys ever really took that much time. I mean, there were places where you took time, like ends of like a transition or something, but it felt like, it didn't really feel it somehow. It felt a little manufactured somehow. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe taking more time or something and just being more in that moment. And that's the other comment uh, I had is that, I think Camden brought up in another group. Um, you guys could play more in the moment, especially in like transitions and stuff. It often felt to me like you guys were looking ahead like to the next section after that transition. But to me then the transition itself sort of suffered and it felt like you weren't really in that moment. You were always like looking for the next thing to you know cue or play together or whatever. Um, so yeah, just like really paying attention to those kinds of moments. Yeah, it sounds great. I think yeah, I reacted a lot to feeling like I, one of the magical things I think about chamber music is allowing yourselves to not play together in a way. I mean, so there were ensemble things, I'm not meaning like you have an excuse to play totally not together. There's, there were things that should have been more together, but also a lot of the time there's this feeling that each, each one of you is playing a character, right? And those characters are different people that want different, slightly different things. And the more they behave like themselves, the more interesting the performance gets. If they're not too worried about always being exactly the same. Um, so for instance, even in the very opening of the cello solo, let's say, you can be slightly late on the F sharp if you want to. You know, so that it has this feeling of like, oh, of leaning back. Uh, you could be slightly early on the F natural, you know what I mean? It, not that that's the only way to do it, but you, neither one of you has to think in the duet form of having to lock in every moment it's kind of like two dancers. This is hilarious that I would say this because I could not dance to save my, save my life. But I think what I know about dancing is that the two people don't have to always be vertical like this. You know, there's a feeling of like momentum and push and pull, and that's kind of missing a little bit sometimes. It sounds like you guys are always trying to be, you know, together this way, um, which is it's going to be even more fun than that. So <laughs> yeah, but it sounds really really great. I'll try the old thing. and stuff, you know, so they're like very outdoorsy people, very like, you know, like to, 
you know, whistle and sing. It, maybe maybe it has more that vibe and less like the weight of the shoulder uh, of, the, of the world is upon your shoulders already so early. It feels feels like very very deep and thoughtful. Maybe it can just be a little more simple. Maybe that'll help. Uh, the material through which you're moving is not uh, air, but maybe, or it, it could be more like air instead of like water or even mud or something. kind of be like tempo hairpins sometimes. They don't necessarily only have to be just dynamic. Um, so for me, like these hairpins that you guys sort of had, maybe it's only in the piano here, but leading into that fortissimo. Like those things I feel like can move forward into the fortissimo and that way the fortissimo then feels like this big arrival finally. Also maybe the chords they do. Um, the, maybe they can have more, um, maybe not too like vertical. Da di da di dum dum. D feels kind of like heavy. Maybe da di da di dum dum. It feels urgent, but it doesn't necessarily feel like uh, you know, have that feeling. Yeah. You know, at the beginning, we don't have to do it again. But um, Cla Clara, is it Clara or Clara? Clara. Okay, Clara. So, um, are you waiting for Julie? A lot, a little bit. Yeah, it seems like you are like you're. I mean, it you know shows that you're a great chamber musician. <laughs> you know, you're listening and you're being um, so <coughs> kind to your colleague. I wonder if actually you have, of course, you know, Julie has the yeah, um, but you have also quite a lot of say in how the phrase kind of inflects, you know, and um, with your line actually, um, you could do a lot of shaping actually you know it, and and i think it's better um, i think that the bar by bar is is now yeah it's it's less than yeah um heavy within the bar but now maybe another step further where you could really think that your line is is more than just a bar it's really a whole shape you know yeah um and less metronomical almost like you have a lot more flexibility right so you could, yeah, you, um, of course, play together with Julie, and you know, but but you also have some leading to your role here, um, and that way it could be more interesting together, right? Um, I mean, do you guys want to try it again? Try it again? Yeah. <laughs>
bum bee bum bum bum. This is all still for fortissimo, right? Da dum bee dum bee dum dee da dee dum dee dum. Then we actually get the diminuendo, and it goes for quite a long time, all the way through the piano, right thing, all the way to the pianissimo. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, the diminuendo goes quite a long way. So, um, I would, yeah, I think one thing I've noticed in traveling a lot and listening a lot is all of us are really good at crescendos, but. Somehow everybody everywhere sucks at diminuendo, and we're all really bad at them. And I think it's because it's very hard to pace what it feels like to kind of come down from an arrival. Because if the second that it's kind of done, you just it's very easy for it to deflate very quickly. So I would make sure that you're really thinking about the the length of the line. This goes across to everything. So it's like just because you're not the first one to play it, but when you have that fortissimo, it's very very important. I think to continue. It's not even just about that fortissimo. It's about how long that line can then be. So really think about that connection, I think. I think one thing that might make that line feel more of like a line is I notice like there's like a lot of space happening with the So I don't, you guys have like a slur over that. So maybe like you can sing through those notes more even and then in doing that you can still have articulation. Yeah, yeah, you have four to small mark, but you also have you can shape and phrase within fortissimo, right? So it's not just the beginning is fortissimo in the whole way, but you can come up with the notes and come, you know. Um, that opening was gorgeous, by the way. Beautiful. <laughs> Great. Um, do you want to start uh, like where fortissimo? As soon as you see the hairpin down now, you're already getting quieter, but that should be your loudest moment of the diminuendo. You know what I mean? So it's like you have the most room. Yeah. Try one more time. Oh, you don't, oh you don't have it in this one. Oh, I see. Different score. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Henley. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what, which one's correct, but it, nevertheless, you, when you, mm, yeah, the, the chromatic, yes, the C natural C sharp, and then the D, uh, if you could, really feel that you know the tension you know I mean I think that tension can be felt even in a in, under a, a dim yeah so it's not too easy like there should be oh, at least we can something. hear the interest in the chromatic whether you grow yeah. or going da -dee -da -dee -da. right that's kind of what's happening musically that's the important thing so as long as we can hear it and it's not gone too soon right the tension yeah uh, same place
right? Like that moment should be a forte, right? And I would say that it doesn't feel super satisfying. Like we were pianissimo before, and I'm not feeling like that difference of like pianissimo to the forte is like at least as a group. Maybe some of you are doing it at different times, but unified as a group, it doesn't feel like it's coming forward. Where, where is that? Where is the forte? Oh, the forte. Uh, but uh, thirty. Uh, sorry, fifty-nine. Oh, is it <laughs> well, at least if you're going to make, like, I think whatever you're doing for the shape, regardless of the scores, or not look at this one anymore, that it feels that in conjunction you guys are making a shape. Or where, where are you planning to go dynamically at that spot in any case? So whether it's a mezzo forte or something, you're, I assume that you're probably growing to it at least a little bit. So whatever you do, just make sure that you all get to the same place together, I think, as a group. One more time, the same thing? Or uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's better. 51, 2, 3. Yeah. Forget that beautiful okay. grace note with the uh, dolce. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because by the time you're in the 
second part of that, someone else is picking it up. So it's not as important, maybe. Um, before the whole of this, um, after the second ending, so uh, I feel like the color that you want um, later in the 165, I guess, or after that, that color came too soon. I think maybe, Julie, you, you anticipated too much with your, where is that? Uh, 3, 2, 1, 161, you know, I think that's still, we don't know, we don't know, and it's still kind of, oh, and then later, yeah, several bars later, then it's, a, it, it was almost like you were, you, yeah, kind of showing that too early with your, yeah, so it's still a transition, I think, um, pianissimo, but pianissimo doesn't mean always dolce, right, there's also, there's, I think, still something boiling on, under, or kind of, oh, mysterious, um, and then, yeah, Unfolds. Um, so I don't know how with our time. Um, yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. We like um, questions. Toward the end, I saw you like going like this, like in terms of like chicken bowing or something. Oh, I, 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 I might have been, and also may not have been. I don't know. Is there, I may have been, but I also may not have been. Is there a specific spot? Like, are you asking for like bowing? Do you have a personal place? I do not. In the in this one here, you know, yeah. for, for, for letters, it's probably the same. I think it was like around 378. Hmm. He, he might have just been Maybe going just been with your life. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time, it probably won't be the last time. Uh, but no, nothing struck me as like a like a Boeing suggestion that like, that I like that st stood out to me. Did uh, I didn't know if you guys split, da, dee, da, da, dee, da, which is nice because I could actually quite hear it. I'm used to hearing it on Dursler. That was maybe the one Boeing thing that I. Was one thing I noticed. Out a bit. It's not really a Boeing in terms of you having any choice in the Boeings, but a little bit later, you know, right before the the big climax, when you guys have the da, 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 because the down bow is naturally so much stronger, it did sound like you know what I mean. So be careful that that just doesn't happen. You just have to try really hard on the up bows. Imagine like a trumpet. <laughs> also, if you hear what he's doing when he did that was something that struck me there is like that the articulation could maybe get ever so slightly longer as you get to that final note. So it's not da 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 dee da dee da dee, right? Because as the note gets louder, in order to make it kind of, uh, in order for a note to get stronger, you have to have your bow on the string for longer. That's just the physics of our instruments at a certain point where you're playing as loud as you can, right? So, so yeah dee da 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 dee, and it also kind of allows you to stretch that time without it feeling like the space is getting longer. Actually, the spaces can stay similar because you're filling a little more of that time with note and bow on the string. Any other questions? No? They know it all. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Bravo. So our thanks to uh, the members of the Dover Quartet for being with us today for a wonderful afternoon and for you know, giving all of your wonderful ideas to our students. Uh, our program is very much rooted in chamber music and in small things, so it's always great to, uh, to build on that and to have them um, you know, keep developing that way. I, I see it as such an important part of um, what everybody, uh, what everybody does, and um, thank you for what you've given us. Thank you to the Chamber Music Society for making this uh, possible. Thank you to the students who, um, these guys and their parents have traveled some from some good distances, and we're just so happy you guys all were here and were able to work together like this. And thank you to all of our teachers um, who uh, really put a lot into the students. I think that's been a, a part of the program. We're still trying to keep it going the way we did it when you were here, uh, Brian. So <laughs> you, um, thank you all again. Have a great afternoon. The rest of the other evening, I guess you should say. And I'll see you out of the room. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.